Okay, today we have a new SSD. This is going to be for our TrueNAS server that we set up a little while ago. The primary operating system drive that is running TrueNAS started to fail. It was an older SSD that was being reused. And I'll cut in a clip here and you can see that there is uncorrectable sectors on this SSD. So when we originally installed TrueNAS on there, that number had initially stabilized. It wasn't going any higher. It was around, I think, 300 or so, and it had been like that for a very long time. I guess installing TrueNAS and putting the drive to use again had caused it to get some wear and tear on it and start increasing the uncorrectable sectors that the drive has. So we went out, we spent about 50 Canadian dollars and picked up a 870 Evo. I've had a few of these Evo drives. I've had an 860. I've had a few 860s. And I think when they first came out, they were 840s. I had a couple of those. Uh, very good drives. Pretty reliable. I still have most of those drives in use even six or seven years later and they work pretty good so let's open this up and see what we get inside Guess it comes with a little manual. Not often you get an SSD that comes with paperwork. They're usually just in the box. So a little installation guide. Some information on how to install. Warranty. Nothing spectacular. Then we get our drive. some plastic okay pretty standard nothing spectacular so let's go ahead and we'll get TrueNAS installed on this and we will move our TrueNAS installation from our server onto this one okay so here's our server and this drive right here is the culprit so we'll open this up and we'll get that unmounted Otherwise, this thing has been pretty solid. It's working really well. I haven't had any issues with it other than the uncorrectable sectors, which caused it to crash uh, one time last week. So we're going to get that fixed up. Get plenty of slack. Let's get our screwdriver kit here. And we'll unmount this drive from the side panel. It's probably the most interesting disc mounting job I've ever done. But you know what? It works quite well. Okay, so we'll pull this guy out. We'll drop this guy in. And we'll mount this right back onto our side panel. And back together it goes. So the one other advantage to getting this done right now is that TrueNAS released an update for version 12.3 so we'll take this opportunity to also get 12.3 installed and upgrade to that 
So all we're going to do is a fresh installation and we'll migrate our configuration from the old disk onto the new disk. And it hopefully should be just as simple as that. So let's go and do that. All right, so let's go ahead over to the TrueNAS site. We'll download the latest version. So 12.0 update three. While that downloads, we will start up Rufus. Okay, download complete. We're just gonna use our eight gig USB stick. We'll select the boot selection as the TrueNAS 12.0U3. And pretty much the rest of this is just gonna remain the same. Okay, perfect. So let's get this plugged into our little server and install TrueNAS 12.0 update three. Let's see how it goes. Okay, so we'll select one, we'll just hit enter. We want to run the TrueNAS installer. Okay, so we don't have anything installed on the disk. It's a brand new disk, so we'll select install and upgrade. We know we went through this less than eight gigs of RAM, which is fine. The system actually worked very well with the user load that was on it, which is only two or three users. It worked excellent. Okay, so we do not want to select these Kingston ones. This is where our, our data currently is. So we'll leave that out of here and we will select the Samsung SSD that we just installed and we'll hit okay. okay and then we'll put in our root password. And we'll just go with the default settings. Okay, so pretty quick installation. We will pop out our USB drive and we'll select reboot. Okay, perfect. Successfully install TrueNAS and have it booted up. Okay, perfect. It's done its first boot up, so I'll shut it down. I will reallocate it back into the network and plug it in, and then we'll bring it up on the web interface. Okay, so we have our TrueNAS server plugged back into the network and booted up. Okay, so perfect. We don't get any warnings or errors here. We're running the new version. And our IP is the same. Our storage pools are not here, which is fine. So before we took the old TrueNAS server with the old disk in it, 
offline and took the disk out, we came into the system settings into general and we saved our config. So you can just click on this. We export the secret seed and we use our password and export it. So I have that saved. So what we'll do now is that everything is here. We will upload a config and we'll grab the config that we had downloaded previously. Okay, so here is our TrueNAS configuration that we created a few days ago. Let's upload that. And we'll let it upload and configure and restart our system. Okay, that should be enough time. Let's try and refresh. So our TrueNAS is back. We're still on 12.3 and our shares are here and our settings. So let's take a look at storage. We should see our pools here. Perfect. We'll unlock our backup pool and then we'll test out to see if it shows up. Perfect, it shows up just as I expected. Okay, so our backups that we created in the last video are now available and we are ready to go. So it was pretty simple to move the this TrueNAS installation from an old failing disk to a new disk just by reapplying the configuration. I hope this was helpful for you. And if you run into a similar issue, that this gives you some confidence that it is possible to very easily and pretty quickly move from one machine to another or one disk to another with a little preparedness being that you would have to export your your config file which you should be doing on a regular basis i try to save this config once a month just in case something happens luckily before our disk completely failed i had a chance to grab it so i hope this video helps you out and i'll see you in the next one bye